Hello, everybody, and welcome to Trilio Insights on True Story FM. I'm Pete Wright, and today we have a special preview episode ahead of Red Hat Summit 2024 in Denver with our own Kevin Jackson, Jan Mikkelbust from Red Hat, Usman Mir from Accenture, and Steve Weiner from Dynatrace. And they are going to be teaching us a bit about their upcoming presentation on achieving IT service continuity through ecosystem-powered AI ops and event-driven automation. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. I'm I'm very excited to hear what you have coming up in Denver, uh, bringing all of you to my fair country uh, and a fantastic time of year to do it. Let's talk a little bit first about who you are and how this collaboration came about. Kevin, home turf advantage. You want to give us a start? Yeah, I'll uh, I'll start. I mean, um, yeah, I love being on this uh, this call with this uh, group of uh, people. Um, so, um, obviously, from a from a Trilio point of view, uh, I'm a senior director of product management. Uh, just for your information and for everybody listening, uh, recently uh, promoted. I'm not the only uh, recent promotion on this call. I'm sure Jan might. Uh, my hint at something uh, in this uh, in this call as well, but yeah, I, um, so I own all the the products now at uh, at Trilio. Um, but that said, you know, as we get into this call, you know, we'll talk about how this group uh, formed. But before we get to that, I think um, Jan, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks a lot, Kevin. Uh, so this is exciting. Uh, as uh, we were talking to, right before we started the podcast, this is my first podcast, so. Uh, Thrilled to be here, and thanks for the opportunity. Um, Jan Mikkelbus, my name, based out of France, and been with Red Hat for a little more than two years. So I am a, an associate principal SA, uh, looking after Accenture at EMEA level. And I'm also recently uh, appointed uh, ecosystem med team lead, so for all the eco SAs in that region. Previously was at Accenture for 10 years, so know the guys very well, worked with Usman before that. Uh, and I've had the uh, the privilege of continuing to do so uh, and build uh, ecosystem family for. So with that, maybe over to you, Usman. Yes, thank you, Jan. So my name is Usman. I've been with Accenture for two and a half years. And before that, I came with a wide variety of uh, IT consultancy background, everything from, you know, Java development to DevOps to operations to automation. And uh, once I landed at Accenture, I was quickly integrated with the Red Hat business group there where I met Yen. And uh, he was leading a very interesting project, uh, a project called Navan, which stands for Navigate Anywhere. And uh, I got to be one of the first pilot testers for that project. And uh, through that, well, uh, I slowly became part of that team. And soon after, Yen left for, well, better pastures and uh, luckily we didn't lose him because he became our contact on the Red Hat side but I was so fortunate to inherit a brilliant young team who I, who I have the pleasure of working with till this day and yeah so the Project Nevan is the center of our little collaboration and through that I got to know the rest of the team and our newest member of our little collaboration is Steve so over to you, Steve. Yeah, thanks, Usman. Well, uh, hi, my name is Steve, and I'm located in uh, good old Germany. So I'm uh, with Dynatrace roughly five years now, and I'm a partner cloud evangelist. So my job is to spread the word, and yeah, together with the other three, and maybe and the team, so roughly five to seven people, and geniuses, all of them, um, spreading the word for Dynatrace to... Yeah, w work together and uh, present a really nice solution in Denver. That's fantastic! I what a what a, a wonderful way this came about. I think is the is the biggest claim to fame of Navan still that there is a blimp. I believe there was a blimp. <laughs> I think that was a very exciting part of the. We don't, we don't know where it is, but it's still. Oh, no. <laughs> The okay. last I heard, it was brought to some event where it was flying around, and uh, maybe it's still flying around somewhere. <laughs> Rogue uh, blimp. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> well, well, this this brings us to the the origins of this collaboration, right? You guys, it, it's it, this Denver presentation in 2024 isn't the first time that you uh, have have been doing things together. Let's talk about how things started a few years ago. As Usman put it, um, this all centered originally around the thing called Nabon. 
So what is Novan? You know, in, in essence, it's a hybrid multi-cloud environment that aims to drive co-creation and innovation for uh, joint cost, customer opportunities. So it's an innovation environment where we can collaborate, co-create use cases, you know, from both a business and technical perspective with ecosystem partners that are relevant to clients, uh, specific clients we work on jointly. So I was already leading this uh, my days at Accenture. We had this vision uh, about how to actually bring more clients in, co-create with partners, et cetera, and so on. And this kind of grew over time uh, to become a platform where we wanted to involve partners to co-create relevant use cases and you know, spread the good word about them. So I knew Trilio from my days way back when working on OpenStack. Uh, so naturally, they were a good fit when we started to think about the use case around digital sovereignty. That's what we ended up presenting at Summit last year. And uh, you know, it all came together uh, around Navan and building those right use cases and then bringing in more ecosystem partners uh, into the collaboration uh, to show new innovative stories. And that's what we're trying to do again this year. But that's just me. I want to you know, hand it over to the other guys so they can say a bit about uh, their, point, their point of view on this. As Jan explained, this is something that sprang out of our little project Navan, uh, or it isn't that little, to be honest. It has grown... I would say uh, quite a bit, both with the people on the team, but also all the partners that we are then directly involved with on different use cases and presentations. But in particular to the use case that we're talking about here, it actually sprang out of a sovereign cloud use case that we were doing for a German uh, municipality. And uh, we have had some uh, funny names internally because uh, it is in German and only Steve is German. So once in a while, we call it a little bit different uh, things. But uh, between us, it became the Fisherman's Friend app, which is basically to have an application where people could go in and uh, uh, apply for their license, uh, fishing licenses. So, yeah, this uh, originally started as a sovereign cloud use case where we as Accenture were tasked to figure out an architecture so that if in any event some regulation came and say, hey, you can no longer host this application on a public hyperscaler or cloud because of, you know, privacy reasons and data protection and so on. Well, you need to be able to very quickly move this application to somewhere that is uh, something where uh, regulations can say, all right, you can host it there. Here, your data, uh, your user data is safe. And what we do in Accenture is that we have a lot of really good, brilliant people who can work with a lot of different t- uh, types of technology. But another benefit is that we have a lot of contacts within the larger uh, eco- uh, technology ecosystem. And since with uh, the Navan project, we were heavily invested with uh, working on Red Hat technology, we, of course, reached out to Red Hat to say, hey, we have this uh, problem here. What would you suggest that we do about this? How should we build our architecture based on what we've already heavily worked on with uh, container-based platforms and uh, automation? How can we enhance that? And with that, we had uh, Red Hat come in and help us with some of their uh, guidelines. So we added in things like Advanced Cluster Manager. And initially, that was a really good use case that we then started to present to clients uh, in our Sovereign Cloud uh, Center, uh, as well as Yen and myself started to go out to various conferences. So we had a very nice one in uh, Slovakia that was... Is it two years ago now? Mm, Two years ago, yeah. Open Slava. Yeah, Open Slava, yeah. Where we actually had our first live presentation in person. And since that, we decided, well, this is a really good use case. Not particularly because of the application itself, but it had a very good foundation to actually build out and enhance as well as move uh, on from just the sovereign cloud use cases to more of talking about IT resiliency and operational resiliency. And the next step was that we wanted to enhance uh, that with these kind of features. So we approached Trilio. And after some time, we brought Kevin on board. And 
yeah, Kevin. Yeah, enter stage left for Leo. So uh, yeah, at that point, you know, we were we were the component that were able to obviously take applications and the data from one cloud uh, to another. So in this case, from OpenShift to, to OpenShift. So so yeah, it's 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 really good here in this this kind of like evolution of like the journey. You know, you get to a state where they had a problem. Um, they clearly saw a, a variety of uh, of solutions available, as you do in the in the IT world. Um, and then it's just nice to see them then grow from like two to, to three. Uh, so that's where we were up to in 2023. The, the say the three of us, the, the, we were uh, on stage presenting uh, over in, in Boston. Um, and then, you know, obviously behind the scenes, there was engineers doing all the, all the other side of things as well. I have to interrupt there, Kevin, because every time when uh, we take the credit and present something, we have to mention there is a brilliant team who is actually doing most of the hard work and ensuring that whenever we're on stage, uh, everything is working as intended. And if it's not working as intended, they're making sure that it will work as intended. Yeah, it's it, it's funny, isn't it? So yeah, we're, we're on stage. You know, all of us will be uh, on stage or uh, in one form uh, or another, and um, and we do the powerpoints. Uh, we, we do all the we do all the the talking points uh, around this. But yeah, behind the scenes, obviously, there's the actual technical stuff. And obviously, we're we're all very intelligent people on this call. But yeah, we wouldn't be able to do this without the the people who actually tap at the keyboard and actually do the do the work of actually moving the pieces around. Um, but yeah, in terms of the the evolution, um, yeah, the, you know, two became three. Um, in 2023, and weirdly, uh, in 2024, we became four. Um, <laughs> we brought on uh, uh, Dynatrace because uh, essentially, uh, Jan uh, and Usman, we took the, um, I say we, uh, I'm, I'm part of this uh, journey, I'm one of the wheels uh, in all this, but basically the, we decided to iterate on, on that original design. Um, when we were over in um, Boston, we, we discussed what's next um, because this was a very successful uh, collaboration. Um, Red Hat, Accenture, uh, Trilio, the, that, that combination for this type of solution worked really, really well. But we knew the fact that there was going to be more uh, to this. Moving an application is moving an application. I mean, we, you know, at Trilio, we can do that day in, day out, uh, all day long. Um, we wanted to see what was, what was next. And what was next was uh, arguably a... A variation on a on a theme, uh, but it was around operational resiliency. It was about um, ensuring application uptime, uh, availability, and making sure that applications are uh, can be used without, in effect, manual uh, intervention. So, so at that point, you know that the team brought on uh, Dynatrace, and we were very lucky to bring in uh, Steve. Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, you know, a car only drives with four wheels, so that's why I'm here. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, the thing is, when you have a great solution nowadays, that solution consists of, I don't know, a quadrillion of microservices, and you need to know. And, and, and also maybe another two, three, four uh, clouds also in the game. And what you need to know is you need to know is it all working as designed or do I need to change something? What happens while I'm scaling from three to five nodes just for my front ends? Is it all working? Or what am I doing when three of them are running on uh, an old version of the front end? What's happening? So you need to take care of that. And that is wh when you need a uh, enterprise ready observability solution. And that's what Dynatrace, or let's say a part of Dynatrace is that uh, where we came from is the, the APM area, so application performance monitoring. And with the new set of stacks with OpenShift, with Kubernetes derivatives, with microservices, you need to make informed decisions. And that means you need to know who belongs to what, which method is calling which other method. Do they all behave as they should? And if not, who is the root cause? Who's, who's the problem? Whom do I need to take care of first? And that's the same with the Fisherman's Friend app. Well, you need to know uh, when there's a problem because uh, the Fisherman's cannot go fishing if they don't have a permit for this. So we need to take care that this software is working perfectly. And if that, when it's not the case, or if we have problems with the sovereignty, 
uh, we need to migrate. So what is needed is a trigger and, a, and to, to be an informed trigger. So now we really have a problem that need to be solved or why we need to migrate. And that is where we, uh, yeah, as Dynatrace are more or less the, the first ones in the game um, when it comes to, um, yeah, we, we, we need to change something. But it's, it's more or less, as we use it here, it's, it's the trigger for the next steps. Uh, uh, if I may, I just want to pivot back on what the guys said there in terms of uh, you know how this all came to be. I think open source is also something that's very important uh, and at the center of this, right? It's it's all about partners that have more or less the same vision, the same understanding of the value and power of open source, right? Or we wouldn't be here. But also, of course, the, the importance of the ecosystem. I think we, we, we can all agree to that. Without the ecosystem, you, there's no good solutions for the clients. No one can do it all. So... I remember us in the hallway after our session last year. We were already hungry. We were already talking about, okay, what are we going to do next, guys? Uh, you know, we need to find, we, we need to pivot our story. We need to find something new that's going to resonate. And, and to Steve's point, enter Dynatrace, right? That uh, was one of the missing ingredients uh, that made the story whole. Uh, although we shifted, as, as Usman said, from a sovereign cloud focus more towards IT resiliency, uh, IT service continuity, excuse me, uh, operational resiliency. And well, the result uh, will be shown at Summit shortly. But the amount of effort it took to kind of drive this as a project, you know, we did design thinking based workshops, uh, you know, sharing ideas as to what would be the next great thing. Uh, we've used, you know, agile methodology driving this as a project with the folks here and, and, and all the engineers in the back end. So there's been a big amount of work put into this uh, altogether. I, I think it's it's fascinating, and I'm I'm really glad you said that, Jan, because I I was thinking about it as I was coming into this show today that that really could <laughs> it, would it be possible with other large platform players to come up with a to to work in a sort of such a cohesive team without the the sort of um, genetic. Uh, um, you know, underpinnings of open source, right? There is a certain ideology that brings these pieces together, this puzzle together, and shows that open source and ecosystems can coexist quite effectively. So, um, you know, as you have been, you know, uh, working through these ideas, what is the current state of of uptake? And looking forward to Summit in Denver, what are your expectations for uptake? What do you want to get out of it as others start to see and experience what you've been putting together? That's a great question. So um, well, I'll, I'll go first quickly. So, um, I mean, to us, finding the right idea, uh, making such an ecosystem uh, collaboration successful rests on several pillars. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, having same vision, same ideals, understanding open source, all of that good stuff, uh, that, that, that's, you know, uh, the, the foundation. Having other key ingredients, such as a co-creation environment uh, like Navan, it's obviously makes things a whole lot easier. Uh, having sponsors, right, uh, amongst all the players uh, at the sea level that actually believe in what we're doing, are supporting us and are confirming, you know, you guys have a good business use case here, uh, is also another key ingredient. And the rest is, you know, is about putting together the right diverse team, skilled folks, uh, brilliant folks that can actually deliver uh, such a project. So I don't see any barriers to doing this with other ecosystem players, you know, providing there's a will, there's sponsorship, and it should be feasible. Um, in my experience, I will say it tends to be more difficult, uh, more challenging rather, if you want to do this with some very large ecosystem players like a hyperscaler, for example. But it's certainly not impossible. You look at a company like Microsoft, they're fully bought in on open source, right? So... That's the first part. And then to what we're expecting from Summit, from my perspective. So uh, obviously raise awareness and tell our good story. And hopefully, you know, uh, the live demo gods will be with us. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but then, you know, talking to a lot of people on Accenture side, Dynatrace, Trillio, Red Hat, uh, to raise awareness around this, uh, see what we can do more about it. You know, we're, 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 we're vending some ideas, such as a roadshow later on, potentially uh, next year. Uh, or later this year, I mean, um, we're thinking about finding, you know, other clients where we can scale this with or, you know, drive a larger conversation around what these ecosystem players can do together because this is one use case. There's a lot more we can do, right? So 
ultimately uh, develop business right? contacts and find new opportunities and ideas as to where we go next. And also, the, from my point, uh, the important is to raise the awareness for the problem itself. I think there are many people around, they think, well, the cloud is up and running 24-7, uh, 365 days a, a year. But that's definitely not the case. I mean, uh, we, we, we talked about it recently, Usman, right? You found out a few uh, uh, timeouts for Azure, for GCP, for AWS. How long has that been? Yeah, and uh, that was one of the, I would say, to be honest, from my per, uh, point of view, I've seen that happen every single year, ever since the cloud has been there, uh, because I've been working with cloud at some point with uh, one or the other. So those stories has always been there. But last year, it really came to the forefront that the cloud isn't always up you might have uh, a large hyperscaler not available for half a day simply because they pushed up a wrong update. It shouldn't be able to happen that a, uh, the global hyperscaler is down in all regions, but it happened. And it didn't just happen to one hyperscaler. It didn't just happen to you know the biggest one. It also happened to smaller cloud providers. So this is an actual risk. And how many companies can say that, all right, uh, it's okay if we're down for eight hours with everything that we have in our production environment? Yeah, that's going to cause a lot of harm depending on uh, how much resiliency you've uh, set up in regards to spreading your workloads around. I think uh, Usman just gave us the clickbait title of this episode. The cloud isn't always up. And, uh, you know, we'll find some sort of egregious thumbnail to go with it. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, your thoughts on what to look forward to, what you expect out of Red Hat? Yeah, I mean, I always uh, love going over to, to the summit because one, one of the things about where, where Trillia fits is obviously we don't exist really without the likes of, of, of the platform. And, you know, and one of the biggest platform in the Kubernetes world is obviously uh, OpenShift. And, and as, we, as I expect, as we go through, through the years, not to, to big up uh, Red Hat or OpenShift or anything, but clearly it's a strategy where it's going to underpin Uh, quite a lot of the the future there, so so it's a very important um, it's a very important summit uh, for Trilio. It's a very important platform um, for us at, uh, at Trilio, and as I say, we can't exist without the 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 like minded people that attend those kind of events. Um, we can espouse all the virtues in the world around um, how. The way we do uh, backup and recovery and migration of um, cloud native uh, workloads, uh, but without the support of, of an ecosystem that um, has to portray that um, uh, that same mentality to to their customers. So, like Jan's customers, Usman's customers, Steve's customers, we all have the same thought process. But if if, if not everybody in the room is bought in, then you know. The value prop for, for various products and solutions go out the window. So it's very, very important for us attending these these type of events. What I want to get out of it, um, certainly there's um, there's going to be lots of lots of events there around uh, orchestration and automation. We we fit into into that category with our own um, summer talk on the uh, um, is it on the Wednesday Thursday. Wednesday. When's our session? Wednesday. 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 Thank you. Yep. I'm glad. I'm glad somebody knows. So I'm, I, I just, <laughs> I just rely I on my you, calendar. Man. I yeah, got no, you. Thanks. I'm glad everybody's got my back. So, um, yeah, Jan and Osman, you're going to have to remind me the night before. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> Boots on the ground um, reminders. Um, That's good. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, but yeah, um, we're, we're part of that automation and orchestration uh, story. In fact, uh, the, the heart of we pull in the likes of um, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management, you know, a great uh, service that, that governs uh, multiple clouds and make sure it's, it's set up in the in the right way. We we touch on Ansible for orchestration. We touch on uh, event-driven Ansible um, so we can um, respond to events from uh, from Dynatrace uh, monitoring. So, so we bring all that together. And, and I just expect to see uh, a lot more of that. And if I don't see that, I'm going to be quite disappointed. We're, we're in this world now where, 
you know, our use case is around applications and ensuring the they're running um, more or less twenty four seven. You know, as Usman said, you know, the cloud isn't um, uh, a complete panacea. Um, you know, it's twenty twenty four, and people still treat it as if um, the you know these clouds are are hundred percent available. I mean, that's how they're marketed. But you've got to put the effort in. You've got to put the. You've got to have the understanding to actually take advantage of all the properties of these these clouds, and you've got to fill in the gaps. And we fill in those gaps. But uh, it's crazy to think that people uh, think they can just throw throw applications up there and expect it to, to run twenty four seven. It's almost almost um, disappointing, really. So I'm expecting to see a lot more orchestration. Uh, a lot of AI uh, has to be <laughs> in there. Um, um, but yeah, I think it's going to be a, a great uh, summit, and certainly we're going to have another uh, hallway conversation of of what what's next. What are we going to do next? Are, are we going to be meeting uh, in 2025 with a number five? Who's next, right? I think uh-huh. Steve gets to pick the next person, right? Isn't that how it works in a boy uh, band? I think so, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes sense. <laughs> okay, last question uh, as we as we wrap up here. Jan mentioned his hope that the demo live demo gods are going to be on your side. Um, I, I don't want you to give me the live demo, but I'm curious how many people are involved besides you in making sure that the demo comes off successfully on the back end at in Denver. So in regards to that, we have at least two to three people who will actively be, uh, well, they're the ones who are putting in most of the work to actually develop the various integrations with the various uh, technology platforms. So they have, of course, also volunteered to be Just keep an eye on things because in the end, it is up to us to present this story and their hard work the best we can. Uh, First of all, I have full confidence in the team that, hey, this will, of course, go well. And I know I'm jinxing it right now, but (laughs) I do have confidence in the team. Second of all, uh, everyone who has ever been to one of these conferences and seen live demos, whenever they see live demos, they do have an expectation of something will go wrong. So, and as I always say to the team, it's it's always most fun when it's burning. And that's where uh, the three of us on stage, we simply have to, you know, address the issue as it comes. Because like we said, if the cloud is not perfect, that uh, that just means that we have to be better than not perfect. And hopefully everything will actually prove us right. Well, to that. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think the, the just the I mean, even Steve Jobs had to ask 5000 people to turn off their Wi-Fi once. So, uh, you know, demos go south. But the, the point, you know, that I want to get to is back to yours earlier, like the number of people who have come together to make this thing work and who are behind you supporting you to make sure that this event comes off successfully is uh, is non-trivial. I think yeah. if, you, if you look at the broader team, you know, all, all partners uh, included here, we're around probably 10, 10 or so people that have contributed in different various ways to this. And I mean, live demo gods, we'll see how that goes, right? But we'll have a plan A, we'll have a plan B, we'll have a plan C uh, to be able to tell our story uh, somewhere or another. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I share Usman's confidence in that this will go well, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. yeah and if not... It definitely makes sense to have some jokes in the pack. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the jokes. The demo god. <laughs> so, uh, we'll say we'll say it's Steve's fault because you're monitoring from afar. Right. I was, about to, I was about to say, yeah, it's gonna be. It's all gonna be Steve's fault, regardless. You know, if um. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Steve. Steve's to gonna be, be legendary after this thing. No matter what, Steve I, is I the will. winner. I, I get. I guess that's the thing. What Sorry. I really liked about this team and all the 10 people I've never met before, I know for a few months now, whenever you had a question, whenever you had a problem, it just took, let's say, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then you had an answer or a hint, or let's say at least something. No one uh, let you wait. Uh, so, and, and that was, was, was really nice experience for just, yeah, meeting a few people for the first time, working together at the same thing. That was great. 
you know, we all work um, globally, and you know, we we put all this um, this solution together, and and it's a, it's 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 going to be this summit where we meet face to face. We don't meet face to face at any other time. And in fact, it was only last year when uh, Jan and Usman uh, myself met face to face. It was literally the day before we were. Uh, going to present on stage, and that was very successful. But I just, I just love the, the the remote collaboration. And to echo Steve's point, I mean, it, it works extremely well. Um, and, you know, I just, it's just very interesting to when people talk around, you know, this office culture, etc. And I know that's not what this 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 call is all about. This talk is all about. But it's, I mean, this this global collaboration works really well, uh, effectively. Um, so, and it's, uh, but it's a great team uh, that we work with. So, so hats off to everyone. To add to that, none of the 10 people involved share an office. Yeah. There That's you go. Cool. You make <laughs> it work. You make it work. Outstanding. Well, gents, thank you so much for uh, uh, sitting down and sharing a little bit about both the ideology and the the what's and how's of the upcoming presentation. It is officially Wednesday, May 8th, 11.15 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, local time in Denver, achieving IT service continuity through ecosystem-powered AI ops and event-driven automation. Put it in your calendar and go see these guys. It's going to be a great presentation and, uh, as we've discussed, a flawless demo, I'm sure. So... Thank you, everybody. Jan Mikobust, Usman Mir, Kevin Jackson, and Steve Weinert. Thank you for your time. And thank you, everybody out there listening to the show. Thank you for your time and your attention. We encourage you to learn more. Just swipe up into the show notes for the episode, and you will see links to all the resources, to the event, to... I'm going to put all their LinkedIn pages on there. You want to go connect with them? I'm not even asking them if that's okay. I think that's going to be okay. And uh, and you can connect with them and, and meet up with them in Denver if you're going to be there. On behalf of our fantastic guests, I'm Pete Wright, and We'll catch you next time right here on Trilio Insights.